Hey guys, I'm here with my Wednesday review of the DVD Fiends, and I do believe it is week 78 or 79, and this week I will be talking about, uh, I guess you could call it a an American classic, and that is the classic 70s porno, The Devil and Miss Jones. Um, sadly, I cannot show any clips, and I cannot show the back of this DVD in fear that I will be banned from, well, the DVD Fiends channel will be banned from YouTube. But, uh, yeah, you can imagine it in your head. Anyway, um, Devil and Miss Jones. This is one of those movies that bo uh, that borders the line between art house and porn. Um, yeah, uh, while it is filled and was made just for pornographic content, the character that Georgina Spilvin plays is very... She's not just one-dimensional, and her performance in it is very well done, it's very well directed, and has an ending that sticks with you. But it follows Georgina Spelvin as she is... as she is depressed, and she cuts her wrists in her bathtub and bleeds to death. Um... Yeah, and after she bleeds to death, she is sent to Limbo, where she makes a deal with the devil. She doesn't feel that she's deserved her spot in hell, so she goes out and, uh pretty much does many acts of lust fucking many people, including Harry Reams and some girl who looks like Kristen Stewart. Now, we've all watched a little porn in our day, and I must say, some of these pornos, it's not the reason I'm watching this. Um, yeah, if... There is an art to some of these pornos that I do appreciate. If I was just gonna watch it and wink off, I would just download it, but the fact that I bought a DVD should say a lot. The movie is actually very well done, especially for its kind. Um, of course, Georgina Spelvin. She looks like an old woman in this movie. I, I think she was like 42 when she did this, or somewhere in her mid-late 40s, and I think like mid-early 40s, and she just looks like she just got out of bed the entire time. Like, she, she looks like actually she hasn't slept in like 10 days, if you can see. She has dark wrinkles around her eyes. Uh, that's her throughout the entire movie, and it's... It, the movie... I don't find 70s pornos to be very big turn-ons, and... Yeah, this is... This is just a very depressing movie. This is actually one of the most... Definitely in, like, my top three most depressing movies I've ever seen, right next to Palindromes. But, um... Yeah, it's, uh... I'm going to spoil the ending, by the way. The ending of the movie is one of the most depressing things. It talks about uh, what happens after you die. She finally does it, and she's sent to her own personal hell for the rest of her life, where she's stuck in a white room for all eternity with a guy uh, sitting there with her, and the catch is that she can't fuck him. Now, the fact of being locked in a white room alone for the rest of eternity scares the hell out of me. Uh, hell is a scary thing, I don't believe it, but the idea of it is fucking scary. Uh, yeah. Um, but this is truly a disturbing movie. Um, it's from the same guy who did, uh, uh, Deep Throat, I believe. And you're probably wondering, why are you reviewing this on the DV Fiends' as horror channel? Well, it's also a cult film channel, and this is a cult film that's grown a cult status, so I might as well educate you on it, but, yeah. Um... It is a very disturbing movie. It's actually very... it's very low budget, but it's actually very well shot um, for a movie of its kind, and, uh, yeah. Uh, let's see. What else can be said about this movie? Not much. It's, uh, it's very dark, and, uh, DV, if you pick it up, comes with a hardcore and a softcore version for those of you who do not like to see Harry Ream shove his finger up, in the, up the ass of Georgina Spelvin. Um, don't pick this up. Uh, it's not the worst thing. Uh, I've seen some incredibly disgusting 70s pornos before. Have you ever seen Water Power? That was kind of, got kind of hard to sit through at points, but yeah. The Devil and Miss Jones. Uh, I would recommend this if you're interested. If you like 70s pornos, I mean, there are a lot of 70s pornos that are either just funny or some that do border the line between art and porn, and this is one of those movies that does border the line before art, between art and porn, and even Roger Ebert. Roger Ebert gave this three stars, which is amazing. Uh, he even says on the back, it's the best hardcore porno film I've seen, which at first I was like, they're doing out of context, because those of you 
who have seen the cover for The Beyond will know that he says The Beyond is dis does not disappoint, and on that one, it's just an out-of-context quote saying, but for Gore, The Beyond does not disappoint. And I was thinking that this was just another out-of-context quote, but if you actually go look up and read Roger Ebert's review, he actually gives it a pretty solid, decent review, like three stars, and, and he has four stars maximum, right? I don't know. Uh, but still, it's, even if it's not, it's still six out of ten, which is still good. Uh, see, this movie is so awesome, even Roger Ebert likes it, but yeah. Uh, it's something that it does get boring, because like all 70s pornos, it does get very boring after a while, and you do have to fast forward through it, but really what I like about this movie is the ending, and the fact that, I don't know, I don't, I can't, I don't know, anyway, this is just, uh, anyway, that's my review, uh, if you're interested, look it up, anyway, peace.